Hi, I'm Dr. Patrick Garrett. As you know, I'm a natural medicine doctor. I practice a little bit of clinical nutrition, functional medicine, and it all comes down to lifestyle medicine. And as a part of the cleaning challenge, I want to talk to you guys about chemicals that they add to our food that make us dumb, right? They make us fat and they kill us prematurely. So most of us during the cleaning challenge, the whole goal is just to eat healthy, right? And that's what I do in my practice is the whole philosophy is stop eating crap. Stop eating chemicals that kill you in the process. And I'm usually pretty surprised that most people don't know at all that a lot of the flavors, colors, and sweeteners that people are eating are just made from gasoline. And lo and behold, you might be surprised, but if we flavor, color, and sweeten our food with gasoline, it messes us up. So let's talk about this. We're going to harp on a couple big topics here. One is the lowering IQ with these food additives. And it's not a secret. We've known since the 60s, right? And we also want to talk about the banned additives. So many people don't know that much of what we eat in America is banned all over the world. We're cool with it. Keep eating it. You're fine as long as you live in America, right? So let's start out talking about IQ. The American IQ dropped in the 1960s and has never regained from that. And this is messed up because we're talking about school children and their scholastic aptitude and each year it gets worse and worse and worse. You know there was this panel that got together of scientists that testified to the Senate even back in the 60s and said look it's the food additives that are messing up the brain and here's why. These synthetic chemicals that we took from gasoline added to the food are messing our children up. And of course being Americans and a for-profit system we ignored that. And so of course between 1977 and 1994 learning disabilities skyrocketed right our IQ plummeted and disabilities went up and so you see more and more ADHD, ADD, dyslexia, uh, inattentive disorder a hundred and ninety one percent increase and we can all correlate that back to just those chemicals just the things that we put in uh, food to make it more profitable and less nutritious so where do we stand in the world now well, this is pretty messed up. As a kid, I grew up telling Polish jokes. If you're Polish, I'm sorry, uh, but that's the way it is, right? Now, you're, you're vindicated here because, as you'll see, Polish kids are now smarter than American kids. And so you, now you have Polish children talking about how many Americans does it take to screw in a light bulb. I mean, we're 14th in reading, right? There's 14 other nations that do better by age 15 in reading than the United States. In math, we're 25th. We have more income in the entire planet, and we are some of the dumbest people for that. Um, if you're not sure about that, you might watch daytime television, right? Jersey Shore, Mari Povich, yeah, Jerry Springer, right? That's that's kind of who we are these days. In math, there's 25 other countries. Science, there's 17 other countries. And so if you look at the bottom, these are the countries that beat us. And again, European, Asian countries, we kind of expect that. But we are dumber than Slovenia. Slovenia. And what's really sad is most, Americans kid, most American kids could not tell you where Slovenia is on the map. So that's where we are. That's how far down we have come. And so it's not money that's going to solve this. It's not more techniques or some new fangled curriculum that's going to fix us. We are literally chemicalizing our kids to be dumber. So in 2004, in the Journal of the American Heart Association, we looked at what colors actually make us dumber. And there was 400 children tested. And what they did was they looked at the effects of the food additives and the artificial preservatives and their effects on the behavior. And check this out. The results demonstrated a substantial effect. And, and as you guys might know, as you do the cleaning challenge, if you do it with your family and you get your kids clean, when they eat those chemicals, boom, you notice a huge change. I cannot tell you how many patients that are 
you know, pretty healthy, and then their kids, you know, go to a birthday party, they eat a bunch of synthetic colors, and then they just go nuts, right? I even see it with our kids. We're pretty healthy, but our kids still are allowed to have candy from time to time, and sometimes it becomes a big problem. And so there is a direct tie to hyperactivity and behavioral problems. In the United States, the FDA actually a couple years ago was going to vote, or they did vote, to put warning labels on candy, American-made candy, uh, because it's related to hyperactivity and behavioral problems, right? But again, being America, eh, we didn't do it, right? We voted it down. So now we don't have warning labels, but yet if our candy was sold in other countries, it would have to have warning labels. That's the messed up thing, right? So maybe the FDA is eating a lot of these food colors here, right? So the other thing, I love this study. This is a Chinese study, and they actually gave food coloring to animals to induce ADHD and ADID. Uh, D. So hyperactive disorder and attentive disorder, and they could actually give enough to make the offspring retarded uh, if they fed the, the pregnant mom this. And so the colors that really um, were most profound, and again, it's just the ones that they tested, but yellow food coloring, so think of yellow M&Ms, yellow Skittles, uh, yellow tricks. It decreased neurite growth by 3,000%. 3,000%, right? And that neurite means that nerve growing to make another memory, to make you smarter. And so that food coloring actually dumbs you down by 3,000%. Blue food coloring was even worse. So now we're talking about 5,000% decrease in brain growth. And then, of course, MSG, 8,000. So it's an accumulative or additive effect. So if we said, what about flavor blasted Pringles, right? They have all three. Ah, holy crap. Now we're talking about a 64,000% decrease in brain growth. So you're talking about this, you know, when you, when you think, all right, I'm going from this room to this room. Why did I go in there? Think food coloring, right? Food coloring is dumbing us down. And so not only is it a problem that we're doing to humans, but I love it when we can recreate it in a lab. That's the most beautiful thing. Like when you take tar and you add black tar, coal tar, and you can actually use that to cause cancer in the lab, that's profound. Because we're not talking about a tie, a, you know, a, there's an association. We're talking about directly causing it. So that is a landmark study. Now, in Europe, we said that these things are banned, right? And, you know, in Europe, they made a big switch. There's 40 years of research that they found that ties these colors and these additives to inattentive disorder and hyperactivity. So, as adults, think brain, uh, brain fog, memory loss, right? Attention problems. Um, that's us. That's us as adults. That's half, or that's like, I don't know, nine tenths of my patients. That's a big problem, right? Well, and in Britain, one thing that they did was they said, look, if you want to sell those American colors that cause this uh, problem with children, fine, but you put a warning label in there. And let's see how much candy you sell. So I love this, because they don't say, ah, you can't sell it. They're saying, look, if you sell it, you got to put a, like a, a cigarette warning on it, right? And so very quickly, those companies did not want to put a warning label on their candy that says it causes all these behavioral problems in children. So what did they do? They replaced it with natural colors, right? And so now in the U.S., our food colorings that are made from petroleum are just everywhere. But if you go to Europe and buy the same product from the same company, you don't get those chemicals. That is messed up. Right? And a lot of people don't know that in China they have two distribution lines. One for American companies and one for everybody else in the world. Right? And the one for the Americans has the most toxic chemicals because we allow it. We allow the chemicalization of our kids and ourselves. Right? Uh, adults still eat Snickers and uh, Twizzlers and you know Skittles, so we're, we're, we're part of this. The EU passed that warning label law and so there's several of these that you can find in the internet but I pulled one off to show you those E's are the food coloring so in Europe they they always call them by E's uh, in the US they would say food dye no, red number 40 or something like that 
Okay, so we know coloring agents cause problems. Well, it gets even worse because it's always in our, not just candies, but like processed foods. So think like mac and cheese. Think of like uh, Jello. Uh, Jello is like the worst. And again, you can just take Knox gelatin and put some fruit juice in there and you got Jello. That's real Jello. That's not going to kill your children, Jello, right? But the worst offenders in the U.S. are blue number one, two, yellow five, yellow six, and of course, the infamous red number 40. We know they cause behavioral problems. We know they cause cancer. We know they cause birth defects. And in fact, yellow number red is the most uh, profound one in things like mac and cheese. And there's this movement to try to get mac and cheese to stop doing that crap, to, to stop putting that food coloring in there, right? And the reason they put it in there is they found in the 90s that if you make the color of the food brighter, you can actually make more profit. And so we ha we can't just have regular colored f food or normal colored food. We have to have something like, you know, neon and bright. And remember when they made ketchup like green and blue? That didn't go over very well. So sometimes it goes over well, sometimes it doesn't. Um, green ketchup was kind of sketchy there, right? So all these countries ban it. All across Europe, Norway, European Union, they all ban it or they require a warning label. Not in the U.S. Look at the food that we eat as Americans. The food dumbs us down too. Look at this. Look at the school lunch for Italy versus the U.S.A. The U.S.A. is pathetic. There's a wonderful uh, Facebook post that I came across of, of this article of trying to figure out is this prison food or school food, right? And so you had to sit there and look at these foods and try to figure out was this a prison lunch or was this a school lunch? And there's not much difference here. And what's amazing is we all think that's just normal until we go somewhere else. Until we see what other cultures are doing that are smarter, healthier, longer living than us. And man, it's radically different. Radically different. And so that's something that Italian meal is something you'd think is a, a really premium kind of meal at a nice little, uh, you know, um, buffet. That's, that's not what you expect for a kid. And so they've actually shown that you can improve behavior just by changing the diet like that, right? So in 1990, or sorry, 1988, the British medical journal, The Lancet, which is a really great uh, journal, was shown the correlation between mineral deficiency, vitamin deficiency, and lack of intelligence scores for American school children. And they found that those dietary deficiencies, uh, really hindered or made them dumb, right? And if you remember the Super Size Me video, right, the documentary where he ate fast food for 30 days, by day 14, they, that, that eHealth, um, no, the health, it was misspelled, uh, company that went out of business, probably because they misspelled the name. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to look them up on the internet if they're misspelled, right? That's my theory. All right, so what they found was that the uh, by by week two, this guy's overeating, and by week two, he wasn't even getting fifty percent of his basic vitamins and minerals. Which means that processed crap that they're feeding to our kid that's full of synthetic vitamins. So, so we're talking additives, right? Synthetic vitamins. Um, you're only getting half. You're only getting half. You're you're barely getting enough to actually prevent a vitamin deficiency disease like scurvy and rickets. That's sad. That's really sad. And so, of course, you have all these biochemical processes that run the body. Something as simple as B6 that's in beans and greens in your, your fermented foods. Those run a hundred different pathways in the body. A hundred different pathways. And if they're deficient, then those pathways slow down and then you get dumber and slower and fatter. What's really interesting is some of the biggest additives that we have is sugar. We have over 50 names for sugar that we put into food, and Americans love it. We consume 156 pounds of sugar a year. 156 pounds of sugar a year. And we're getting dumber because of it. Sure, we're fatter. But what's interesting is that by the time a person becomes obese, they've lost 8% of their brain. That's dumb, right? And so what's interesting is if you look at these two pictures here, these, this is actually a cross-section where they sawed this body in half, 
to show that it wasn't big bone, you were just big fat, right? So that's pretty obvious. You can see the bones are the same. But one thing I noticed right away is I love neurology and their brains don't look the same. There was a big difference between the normal size brain and the overweight brain. And the difference was that brain is smaller. And so those foods that we eat as Americans, especially the fried foods and the Krispy Kreme bacon cheeseburgers, they actually dumb us down. And so not only does all that sugar do it that we add, I mean, just the pounds and pounds of sugar. Think of like a, a soda, right? The average 15-year-old drinks 800 sodas a year. Each of those sodas has at least 16 teaspoons of sugar. Take a cup and have your kid put 16 teaspoons of sugar in there and then say, yeah, that's not cool. I'm not doing that. Gatorade's the same thing. Gatorade's freaking Kool-Aid with a, a little salt in there. That's all it is, right? Energy drinks, the same thing. So not only is that sugar, that all that additive sugar, making us fatter, but it's literally shrinking our brains. Now, by far, one of my favorite trips to ever do uh, in Kansas, because there's not much to do in Kansas, is I drive down about four hours into Oklahoma. And in the middle of Oklahoma, it's all flat, as you'd expect, and then suddenly there's these little mountains, right? Eh, 2,000 foot mountains from flat. So it's kind of like mountains. And in the area, it's a wildlife preserve, an awesome place to go hike and rock climb and, and, and spend time with the family. But they have a, a prairie dog village there, right? And so we stop and look at the prairie dogs, and they have this sign. And the sign says, do not feed the prairie dogs your processed food. It damages their immune system, and they will die. And so that's pretty, you know, okay, don't feed them bread, right? But the way I read that sign is, hey, you know that stuff you're feeding your family? Yeah, don't feed it to these prairie dogs because we care about them. We don't want them to get sick and die, right? Up to the right of the screen, you'll see that uh, other picture of the dead deer. Uh, and, and that's from a German uh, sign that would said, don't feed the animal, it kills the animals, right? The processed food that we eat will kill those animals. And yet not one person looks at that sign and says, yeah, I'm screwing up here. That's not good, right? So one of the big problems that we have with bread is, is one of the additives is potassium bromate. And they use this in bread uh, in America because it makes bread whiter and fluffier, which means I can make a little more profit by using less ingredients, and it's more fluffy and white, so it looks prettier, more people buy it, Ka-ching, you get sick, right? I make money, you get sick. So we know that this chemical not only destroys organ tissue and nerve tissue, but really thyroid is going to be a big problem with this because bromate is from bromine, and bromine is a halide, and it competes with iodine in your thyroid. And so it can actually displace that, and it won't show up on your lab test, which again, is one of those reasons why your doctor will look at the lab, say, ah, the lab's normal, you're fine, and you feel like crap, right? It's not a secret, it's not a, a mystery. You got thyroid problems, right? But they always go unchecked because of that. And so they just put you on antidepressants. Ah, it's not your thyroid, it's in your head. Yeah, clinically you look like a thyroid problem, but the labs look fine. So I'm going to treat the labs, not the patient. Ridiculous. Anyways. That is not only banned in the European countries, but also in the Asian countries and, of course, our neighbors to the north, oh, Canada, right? So everybody's banning that chemical. And you know what's even worse is that in Singapore, you could go to jail for 12 years and get a half a million dollar fine if you make Wonder Bread there like you do in America. How you like that? That's how serious they are there. Now, yoga mat material is found in, of course, your Subway sandwiches, but most processed breads you'll find this in. And so this azo chemical is actually a whitening agent, which, again, is the same thing. If we can make this stuff look prettier, we can make more money from that, right? So this is a, anti, or sorry, a foaming project, uh, product that they add to plastics like yoga mats, 
Uh, and so then they thought, well, why not add it to bread? We can make it fluffier. That's cheaper to use a chemical. Uh, so that's that should be cool, right? But of course, uh, it causes things like asthma and other diseases, and it's banned all over the country. So, not a surprise. Now, for all you Mountain Dew drinkers or those kind of orange yellowish drinkers, uh, talk about two things here. All right. So bromine again, brominated vegetable oil. Bromine. All right. So they take genetically modified uh, vegetable oil, which is bad in its own own right, and then they brominate that thing or brominate that thing, which then makes it even worse because again, we're now we're messing up the thyroid again. Thyroid is directly tied to intelligence, it's uh, directly tied to learning, it's directly tied to your weight, all that stuff, right? Even puberty. And so this chemical is added to it to prevent the separating of fluid, uh, sorry, uh, flavors, and so that way you don't have to shake up your soda or, or mix it up, it's, it'll, it'll stay the same consistency. But this stuff messes up all kinds of organ systems, <laughs> including your heart. And it's banned in European uh, countries and, and even Japan. All right, so that's the bad part, right? That's a bad additive. What's a really cool additive in uh, these kind of orange or yellow kind of drinks is that um, <laughs> the uh, flavor. Now, this is organic, right? This is real. This is good. Uh, if you didn't know this, but the flavor that's in Mountain Dew is from the secretions of the anal glands of beavers. <laughs> so if the bromine doesn't scare you, how about some beaver anus juice to really flavor up your your drink? So and again, you'll find that in ice cream and other stuff, but uh, that's that's awesome, right? And so let's go backwards uh, and look at something that I think it's banned now, or they, at least they took it out of the chips, uh, which is a Lestra. Right? The rest of the world banned this product. Uh, in the U.S., we banned it for a while, and then we brought it back. Um, so uh, the warning of this stuff, Alestra is a chemical additive that prevents your uh, uh, small intestine from absorbing the fat. So good. We can eat fatty, crappy products like America, and we don't have to be fat in the process. But there's a little problem. It causes anal leakage. Sudden anal leakage. And it used to be the warning on the chips. And so it would be like you're eating at the Super Bowl, right? And you're watching the football game. And you're eating your little fat chips that won't absorb the fat. And then you're like, yeah, go cowboy. Oh, oh, uh-oh. I'm glad I wore black pants, <laughs> right? Sudden anal leakage should not be the side effect for an additive. So it didn't go over very well, right? But it's still sold as ally. Right? If you look over to the right, you'll, you should see that little ad. But it says, Ally Alert, black pants are not enough. The box actually recommends that you wear black pants and bring an extra change of pants to work because of the anal leakage. So that's a pretty good additive. That's awesome. Go America, right? What about paint thinner? Holy crap. When you talk about additives and preservatives, this tops the cake. We have things like BHA, BHT, uh, benzene, sodium benzoate, benzoic acid, TBHQ. And guess what? It's made from gasoline. You oxidize that gasoline and you got paint thinner. You oxidize that paint thinner again and you have a nice, wonderful, dirt cheap preservative that you don't have to have. But it's cheap. It makes more money. If you look at something as simple as gum, gum has like three... Uh, preservatives that are made from petroleum. It has uh, the colors made from petroleum. And it has three sweeteners made from petroleum, all in the effort to preserve gum and knock out two or three calories from the each stick. We poison ourselves for three calories. How about that? Now you'll also find this in lots of cereals, nut mixes, maybe some spreads uh, in other foods. But again, you'll see that BHT, BHA. TBHQ, benzoic acid. Um, I actually uh, told a patient they were taking supplements that had benzoic acid in it. And I said, hey, that's made from benzene. Benzene's made from petroleum. And they wrote the company said, hey, what the heck's going on? Why are you putting petroleum in the products? 
and the director of the science department says, well, actually, benzoic acid's found in decaying fruit, and so it's natural. And I said, no, you're not using decaying fruit. You're using gasoline. You're taking gasoline and making benzoic acid. You're not using decaying fruit, right? So they're misleading the population with that. They're poisoning people and telling them it's decaying fruit, which is a joke. So this, this chemical is banned all across Asian countries, European countries, but not in the good old USA. It's everywhere here. Yale uh, School of Medicine looked at plastics. Well, can plastics make us dumb? Ah, you're right about that, right? Plastics led to learning disabilities in children and neurodegenerative disorders in adults, let alone messes up your hormones because it's one of the most potent estrogenic chemicals there is. Um, so if you're making, if you're drinking out of hard plastic, look at the bottom, look at that triangle. If it's three or seven, you're killing yourself. If it's another different plastic, you're still killing yourself. So get glass. Drink out of glass. Get a Voss water bottle, a Pellegrino water bottle. Go to Target and get a glass one with a rubber outing. Uh, Starbucks has those. There's no reason not to have one. Those are, those are what you need. But that plastic is actually dumbing us down. And so it's really messed up. Like if you look at Gerber Organics, it's in plastic number seven, bisphenol A. But non-organic Gerbers and glass doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. So we're killing the people that are trying to take better care of their children. Now this is a really good subject here, like fluoride. Fluoride's an additive that we put in toothpaste, mouthwash, and of course even the water. And that fluoride competes with iodine for your thyroid. And when it gets on there, your labs will look normal, but you're getting dumber and fatter. Okay? So it's not new. This isn't like revolutionary stuff that I'm saying. We've always known this. But the scientific information doesn't trickle down to your doctors very quickly. And so 1937, there was a great study published and on fluoride uh, intoxication. In fact, the fluoride that you get in your water system, your additives, was actually a toxin that had to be um, from aluminum production that had to have hazmat certified people in trucks to, to take that poison away. And they convinced the municipal water sources to actually put those in the water table, that it would actually improve dent uh, uh, teeth, right? And of course it doesn't. It dumbs us down, messes up our nerve system, all that. So, how can we have a smarter diet? Well, think of the cleaning challenge, right? Stop causing it. That's the number one rule I have in my office, is whatever you have, you caused it, stop causing it. Then let your body heal, and your list of 50,000 problems all disappear because your body's designed to heal. We're just killing ourselves with chemicals and additives. So don't eat crap that has stuff added to it. No additives, no artificial flavors, no artificial colors, no added chemicals, no gasoline to flavor and sweeten your food, right? Don't eat neurotoxic chemicals. That's, that's simple, very, very simple. All right, I love talking to you guys about this stuff. Um, so in conclusion, uh, many countries ban these chemicals that we eat that dumb us down. Uh, companies will always use the cheapest, most toxic chemicals if they are allowed. In America, go for it, right? So you can't wait for the companies to, to stop poisoning you. You have to be very, very aggressive about this. Companies will always choose profit over people. And so the socialized countries that banned all this stuff, well, they have to pay for their people to be sick, so it's easy enough for them to say, yeah, let's stop making our people sick. So that's why they banned those things. And then people have the power to change through purchasing, right? Stop buying that crap, and the companies or the stores will stop offering those things. As long as we, the consumer, keep buying the cheapest, crappiest chemical things, then they're going to supply us with them. Right? And the last thing, the last conclusion here is really the biggest frustration is at what point is enough enough? I mean, at what point are we going to stop poisoning people with gasoline? I'm just, I have no words for that. It's just crazy. Just absolutely crazy. All right. So I thank you guys. Um, 
I really appreciate you guys tuning in and, and hearing about this stuff, and I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, so look forward to some more, and you know, keep up with the challenge, and I'm, I'm very excited for you guys. Thank you.